Hello, I'm Dr. Mary Ann Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about yogurt, how to make it, and what it's good for. Now, modern medicine has only recently discovered the benefits of a healthy gut microbiome, as they now call it, using probiotics and yogurt cultures to keep the gut running smoothly. Many of the modern pharmaceuticals destroy a large part of our beneficial bacteria in the gut. Medicines like antibiotics, birth control pills, immunizations, steroids, and acid reflux medicines. Therefore, it becomes critical that we learn how to replenish the healthy bacteria because they prevent irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, food allergies, and autoimmune diseases. You might be surprised to learn that the friendly bacteria were documented in the ancient Vedic texts thousands of years ago, long before the advent of modern medicine. These invisible creatures, like bacteria, both friendly and unfriendly, viruses, fungus, protozoa, helminthes, and algae are referred to as cream in the ancient Vedic text. And within the literature of Ayurveda, Atarva Veda offers many descriptions of both the friendly and the bad bacteria. And in fact, the Sharak Sanghita, the famous Ayurvedic text of internal medicine, discusses the relationship between bacteria and sunlight. And now we know how UV light inhibits the growth of bad bacteria. Now, the Shaka Vansya lineage of Ayurveda, known as SVA, which is my teacher Vaidya Ramakant Mishra's family lineage, coined the term yoginis when they referred to the friendly bacteria because they receive the prana or the life energy from what we consume in our diet and deliver it to the whole body. Prana is that universal cosmic life energy. It's found in all living things like amoeba, plants, animals, and humans. So the yoginis, in essence, connect our inner body with this universal body and act like little goddesses that give and support life from both a mental and a physical perspective. Nowadays, it's well documented how the friendly bacteria in the gut make 90% of the neurotransmitters in the brain which dictate our mental state, but they're also responsible for the breakdown and absorption of nutrients into the bloodstream from the food we eat. So that keeps our physical body strong into old age. They also stabilize the immune system, preventing it from attacking food or worse, your own body, which could result in both food allergies and autoimmune diseases. So it's no wonder they were considered little goddesses, which protect our physical and our mental health. Making your own homemade yogurt is one of the best ways to nourish your body with these little goat yoginis, but since it's cold dairy, it's considered abhishandi, which means it can form ama, or partially digested food, which is clogging to the body's physical and vibrational channels. This is why we always have to add heat to cold dairy to prevent its cold clogging nature. That's why we boil milk before we consume it, or we simmer the butter and clarify it to make ghee. In both these instances, we're adding agni, or fire, to burn the heaviness of the soma contained in these dairy products, and it makes them less capable of forming ama. The problem is, though, we can't boil yogurt or else we'll kill the friendly bacteria contained with it. So it's because of this fact there's several rules regarding the best way to take yogurt so as not to cause clogging and mucus formation and at the same time retain its live bacterial cultures. So let's start at the very beginning. First, it's best to start out with a good yogurt starter culture. We recommend the yogurt starter from a company known as Natrin, who originally took this culture to America from Russia, and they figured out how to keep the cultures alive as they processed it. Because don't forget, these strains of bacteria are really delicate, and they can die during the processing of both probiotics and yogurt strains. And it happens all the time with most of the probiotic companies on the market. Most of those cultures are half dead. So Vijay Mishra and I had tried several yogurt starters and several yogurts that are on the supermarket shelves, but none of them had the alkalinity he was looking for. Because see, the ancient text or the Shastras said that the yogurt shouldn't taste too sour because the acidity could kill the friendly bacteria in the yogurt. So this type of alkaline yogurt is easier on the colon, unlike kefir, which carries high yeast, 
and it might overwhelm both the immune system and the colon. If an individual has a sensitive immune system, they may experience complications or additional symptoms when they ingest kefir. Also, yogurt is not contraindicated for pregnant women like kefir is. And according to the Shastras, yogurt starter is better for you than kefir starter because it has a more sattvic nature. Sattvic foods are those that are fresh, pure, nutritious, and balanced, and they give us physical strength and mental clarity. The bottle of the yogurt starter has an expiration date on it, which is usually around a year, so it can be kept in your refrigerator to keep the cultures live. The jar will tell you exactly how to make the yogurt, but basically you would heat six to eight cups of whole, non-homogenized milk, if you can get it, over a low flame to at least 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 80 to 82 degrees centigrade. Don't boil it though, just keep it hot. Maintain this temperature for at least five minutes. Then turn off the heat, allow the milk to cool down to 108 to 112 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 42 to 44 degrees centigrade. Then place one to two level teaspoons of the yogurt starter powder into two tablespoons of the cooled down milk and just keep whisking it to make a smooth paste. Continue to add a little more milk in small amounts each time, blending thoroughly after each addition until all the milk is used up. Then you can pour that into either a yogurt maker or put it into a large bowl covered with a towel in an oven that's kept warm with a pilot light. Leave it overnight and wake up the next morning to your first batch of beautiful, healthy homemade yogurt. It might take a few tries, but you want to aim towards getting a yogurt that isn't too sour. The longer it stays in the yogurt maker or the oven, the more sour it will become. So it's best to keep it in for no longer than about six hours or so. Now for your next and future batches of yogurt, use one cup of yogurt from the previous batch to whisk into the cool down boiled milk. And you can do this for about two months. But each time you make a new batch, there'll be a little less live bacteria in that new batch. So it's good to start over with the yogurt starter powder about every two months to guarantee that you'll have lots of beneficial live cultures in there. Once you've made your yogurt, you'll be so excited to try it and receive its numerous health benefits. There's several things you can do though to cut back on its channel clogging aspect. First, you could make a medicinal lassi where you blend one fourth cup of plain yogurt with three fourths cup of room temperature spring water with a pinch of ground cumin and three cilantro leaves. Blend it in a blender for about a minute and skim off and discard any fat that rises to the top. And then repeat this process one more time. Take sips of this little lassi in between bites of food at lunchtime only when your digestive fire is the strongest. Or you could try wrapping the yogurt in cheesecloth and let it drip into a bowl overnight in the refrigerator. And you can drink these drippings again at lunchtime in between bites of food. You could also try stirring the yogurt into your dal or kitchari or vegetables, grains, and you could eat the yogurt plain with a little bit of raw honey and some nutmeg. But because both the honey and the nutmeg are heating and they can cut through the coldness of the yogurt, which will decrease its mucus form and quality. You can even try to boil the milk with a cinnamon stick or a few thin slices of fresh ginger in the very first step of making the yogurt, strain them out, and then whisk in the yogurt culture once the milk has cooled down to the correct temperature. Both these spices, the cinnamon and the ginger, add a little heat or agni to the otherwise cold clogging yogurt. And if you're very sensitive to the mucus form and quality of yogurt, it might be best to consume it only in the summertime when the sun's closest to the earth and it's warming up your digestive fires, which will help you digest it better. Now, many of you though are allergic to dairy products and so you're consuming coconut yogurt made with coconut milk. The problem here is that coconut is considered a heavy fruit, which also needs a strong metabolic fire to digest it. So if you make yogurt out of it, it becomes too heavy for most people to be able to consume without making some ama out of it. But just using the coconut water obtained from a fresh coconut is okay because you'll get the health benefits 
of the coconut without the clogging properties of the coconut milk. So here's how you get the coconut water out of the coconut. Press into one of the three eyes which are at the top of the coconut. One will be a little soft, so pierce it with a screwdriver, turn it over, and strain it into a glass. Warm up this coconut water to about 98 degrees, which only takes a few seconds, in a pan over a cooktop. Keep a thermometer in the coconut water so it doesn't overheat, because too much heat will destroy the friendly bacteria. Whisk in a teaspoon of the yogurt starter, and then you could put it in either the yogurt maker or the warm oven for about six hours or overnight. Refrigerate it in the morning, and every day take about one to two tablespoons of this on an empty stomach, whatever you can tolerate. Now, yogurt itself doesn't mix well with fish or spinach, and it also doesn't mix well with fresh fruit. And you might ask, why not fruit? Because many of the yogurt companies have it mixed in already with fruit, and so many people do combine it with fresh fruit on their own. But see, both yogurt and fruit are considered somogenic, which means they both contain a high amount of cooling soma. Since soma is so cooling, it takes a strong digestifier to break it down. And if it isn't digested properly, you can make ama, or partially digested channel clogging residue from this cold food. Always remember, ama in Ayurveda is considered the root cause of all diseases. And if you make ama after a meal, you'll feel real heavy and sluggish, kind of bloated. And as it clogs your channels, you might feel stiffness and inflammation in the joints and muscles. Now, while some people might be able to digest fruit and yogurt together, most people don't have enough metabolic capacity to properly digest it. And in fact, I remember Vijay Mishra cringing when I told him that people in America eat bananas with yogurt, both of which are heavy and channel clogging. But really, other than these few little complications, freshly made homemade yogurt is really beneficial to your health and really tasty. I'm sure you'll reap great benefits as you continue to regrow the friendly bacteria in the gut that became depleted over the course of your lifetime. It's always so exciting to put your yogurt cultures in your oven or yogurt maker at night and wake up to this beautiful, freshly made, delicious yogurt hailed as one of nature's greatest gifts to our health. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll learn how to make your own yogurt at home. You'll be amazed at the difference between this freshly made yogurt with live cultures you just made versus the store-bought containers containing additives and sugars found on the supermarket shelves. Thank you.